welcome back to my Mansions of Madness playthrough. We're playing through Blood Ties, the third scenario in the base game. Uh, when last we left off, we had Joe Diamond elbowing a zombie, I guess, in the lungs, stunning him. And I forgot to put the damage token on the cultist, but I do have it on there now. He took one damage from the holy water that Sister Mary threw on him the previous turn. All right, it's the hero's turn, or the adventurer's time, uh, turn to go. And... Um, Joe Diamond, uh, seeing what's going on over in the graveyard, having stunned the zombie, is actually going to make um, two moves, one, two, and he's going to shoot at the cultist. He's, uh, he's a little tired of this cultist harassing Sister Mary, so he's going to go and try and shoot the cultist. So, we pick one of the humanoid cards. And we look at the top part, which so I didn't mention before, but the top part's for the heroes, the bottom part's for the monsters. And you pick the applicable thing. And in this case, ranged weapon, he's using his 45s. It says, right before you pull the trigger, your opponent screams and charges you. Test willpower. Okay, so Joe Diamond needs to test his willpower. His willpower is five. So he needs five or less. And, of course, he gets a 6, which means he fails that test. So let's see what the consequence of failure is. Um, fail. It startles you, and the shot goes wide. No effect. So Joe Diamond, startled by the screaming cultist, his shot goes wide. No effect. All right, that was his actions, his two moves, and his one action. Now, uh, hmm, Sister Mary is in the room here, and she really wants to search that, so she's going to go ahead with her action, and she's going to search and find out, <laughs> of course, wasting her time, there is nothing in there of any interest. Um, and then she is now has a couple moves. I think uh, she will probably move further back into the building. Um, to, for next time, maybe searching that space. So she's just going to leave off there, and that will be that will be the end of the uh, adventure or the hero's turn. The investigator's turn is now over. Okay, very quick. Uh, it's too bad Joe Diamond missed, um, and that's unfortunate because that would have been good for him to do some damage to that cultist. All right. We're going to go now to the Keeper turn. We'll go over to the Keeper cards and see what's going to happen. Okay, so here we are at the Keeper area. And the Keeper last turn used up all of his threat. So he has none left. It is now uh, time, if the uh, investigators were in the same space, they could exchange uh, items, but they are not. So that won't happen. So the next step in the Keeper phase is he collects threat. So he's going to collect two threat. Uh, one for each investigator. And now we move into the spending of the threat tokens. So the first uh, threat token he's going to spend is, of course, to move all monsters one space. So let's go back to the board and we'll uh, do that. Okay, so down here in the cave, uh, we have this zombie shambling along. Now this uh, cave, there's a white line here, is split into two spaces. So he's able to move one space, so he's going to move to the second part of the cave. And if we go up here now, um, now it's, I, last time I moved the stun token off during this movement phase, but it's actually during the zombie attack phase, or the monster attack phase, which comes directly after this. So I will do the movements first. The cultist is going to move into the space with Joe Diamond. So I guess he didn't like being shot at. He's going to try and take a swing at Joe Diamond. And now we go into the monster attack phase, uh, which is when the stun token comes off of this zombie, which means it can't do anything. It can't move, it can't attack. It just loses the stun condition. However, the cultist now can attack. And we're going to be drawing cards here until I get one that says Monster Attacks. And I'm getting Monster versus Hiding. And, okay, one of the cards that I just drew says Monster Attack. Monster makes its special attack. So how does that happen, you say? Well, underneath the monster um, uh, uh, tray here is the information for that particular monster or cultist in this case. 
and it says all cultists in the room start chanting. Well, there's only one of them. And test luck. So Joe Diamond has to test his luck. Now this is the one thing you cannot add your luck skill to, uh, is you cannot add luck to luck. So Joe has to make a straight up luck roll. His luck is three, so he needs three or less. Mm, he gets a six. So he does not pass his luck Roll. So let's take a look at the rest of the text here. So if you fail, you fail, oh sorry, you fall to the floor gasping for breath. You take one damage per cultist in the room. Okay, so he did some uh, funky mojo stuff on Joe Diamond, some kind of a curse or something. And Joe Diamond is going to take one damage. Well, that's not good. He has lots of... Uh, damage to take. That's his first damage. He has 12 health, so now he's down to 11. Okay, so that uh, is the monster attack phase. Um, and yes, I did save one more uh, threat token uh, during the play the action phase because I want to save up a little bit for other things. All right, that's the end of the monster action phase. So the last thing we do with um, the keeper's turn is we add one of the timer tokens to the card. So that's the first of two. Okay, so we had a little bit of activity here. Sister Mary searched the uh, entryway, didn't find anything, moved farther into the building. She's now in the guest bedroom. Joe Diamond came running in after he'd stunned the zombie and took a couple of wild shots at the screaming cultist and missed. And the cultist came in and did some um, cultist gibbering and uh, Joe Diamond was damaged for one. And of course, the thing I forgot was that Joe Diamond needed to make a horror check. And the horror check for the cultist is minus one, and he just has to use his willpower to pass a horror check, and his willpower is five, so at minus one, I'm sorry, it is plus one for cultist. So he needs to roll six or less, or he's gonna take one horror. And he rolls a six, so he does not take a horror. So I did that a little bit out of sequence. Uh, the second the monster moves into your room or space, you must make a horror check. Uh, or if you move into a, uh, a room that has a monster, you must make a horror check. All right, that uh, concludes turn three. Uh, now Joe's in a little bit of trouble here, perhaps. He's got a zombie that is not stunned anymore behind him. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's turn three. Join me next time for turn four.